Ohio was the most recent state in which one of these pro-abortion initiatives was successful. Issue 1 opens the door for abortion on demand through birth in Ohio and could even take parents out of the conversation when it comes to minors obtaining an abortion or even invasive surgeries that are meant to change a child's biological sex. Joining me now to shed light on what happened in Ohio is Matt Salisbury, managing partner and director of digital at Pesh Strategy. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Your team worked in the final weeks leading up to the vote in Ohio to try and get the pro-life message out. Give me your take on why the message of pro-abortion activists actually won out in the end. Prudence, thanks so much. It's, it's tremendous to be here with you. Um, as you mentioned, we were involved in the end game there in Ohio. Uh, specifically to work with the Physicians Coalition uh, that was uh, working hard on the pro-life side. We were unfortunately unsuccessful. I think the pro-abortion side, the abortion movement in general, has been very successful because they've been able to medicalize their position. They've been able to put a white coat on the abortion industry. Uh, it's worked with voters. We've seen that over and over again. They've got good messaging. They've got the right spokespeople. Uh, they've got at least the uh, uh, perception that they've got grassroots support uh, and they've got a lot of money and they're being very, uh, you know, they're being tremendously successful with that. Right. Doubling down on that, that talking point that abortion is health care. It's very troubling. Moving forward, Matt, what do pro-lifers in these states need to do better? What needs to change? It's a great question. Um, first of all, we need to uh, accept the fact that the other side's been winning. I think it was Julius Caesar that said that experience is the teacher of all things. Well, we definitely have a lot of experience now losing. We've lost seven state, straight states. Um, and uh, it really matters more than any other political uh, ballot measure or campaign because lives are at stake here. Right. Um, we really need to get back into the driver's seat. Um, the other side, they've got a two-track message that's really resonated. The first is this idea of freedom, getting government out of the exam room. Uh, Molly Ball unpacked this in the Wall Street Journal recently, did a really, really good job um, kind of explaining how the other side was able to co-opt our own message um, and use it against us in a red state. The second tract is protection from harm, protecting women and girls especially from harm. We know this is absurd. Every time an abortion uh, is performed, one of the patients is, dies and the other patient is usually scarred for life or for a significant amount of time. Um, we also know that 93% of OBGYNs don't even perform abortions. Mm -hmm. So the idea that this is essential women's health care is absurd. That being said, this, this dual message of protection from harm and um, freedom, keeping government out of the exam room, it's really worked for them. So we need to push back. We've got our own doctors. They're tremendous. There are thousands of them, fired up pro-life medical professionals. We need to uh, uh, use them more effectively and earlier on and not bring them in last minute. Yeah, really well put. Great analysis. And, and Matt, how does the national conversation around abortion impact these state level elections? You know, are, are the broad implications of these abortion questions on the ballot really grasped by normal people around the nation? I don't think they are. Again, there, there's been this, this real um, almost insidious ability by the abortion industry to, um, in particular, focus on harm and protection from harm. Um, you know, talking about ectopic pregnancies, one in 50 pregnancies is an ectopic. I'm um, talking about the, you know, very young girl who's a rape victim tragically and uh, then becomes pregnant. I'm um, talking about the late stage miscarriages. We need to do a better job of telling voters and Americans in general that um, medical care is not impacted in a negative way by the pro-life movement, right? Um, if it were, then Catholic hospitals wouldn't have been providing good medical care for the last 50 years right. since Roe. Um, it's just not true. It's a lie. But again, the other side's done a tremendous job dressing itself up in a white coat, pretending they care about women and girls. It's a lie. Yeah. And, and how do we use the political sphere moving forward, Matt, to influence the culture conversation and, and save babies in the womb? And not only these children, but also young women and girls who are are contemplating ending these precious lives? It's a great question. I think this idea of a whole life ethic where we really start to focus not just on the moment of decision around abortion, um, but actually looking at how we care for women and girls and families uh, that may be struggling. You know, oftentimes these are fraught choices and this is not made lightly by people. Mm. So really walking with them, accompanying them. Um, I think the Catholic Church in particular does a really good job with that. Um, that's the first thing. On the political front, um, fighting back, right? As I said, there are thousands and thousands of pro-life medical professionals in this country. Um, APLOG, uh, the American Association of Pro-Life OBGYNs, is the leading membership association 
of pro-life medical professionals. They do tremendous work um, uh, year-round and not just in political contexts. Um, there's a lot of good uh, physicians and uh, medical professionals at work every day taking care of their patients following Hippocratic medicine and the principles of Hippocratic medicine. Um, I think it could also be very helpful if people would talk to their own medical professional, right? Your doctor, the nurse who's mm -hmm. taking care of you. Um, it's important that, uh, you know, the, the people who provide our care um, share our values and share our perception of human life and the sacredness and dignity of human life. So I think that conversation is one that's an easy place to start. Absolutely. Well, very insightful conversation. Matt Salisbury of Pesh Strategy. Thanks for joining me. God bless. Thanks, Prudence.